move fast if you can, like move as fast as you can, but adapt along the way. Yeah. And if you fail, you fail, but it goes back to adapting, adapt, fail and adapt. Um, Cause you don't really know what's right until you do. Mm. And, it, and it ties into that perfectionism piece as well, isn't mm. it? It's all about, cause if you're trying to perfect you, then you'll slow things down because the common thing we're often saying is you get, 80% of the way there with the first 30% of resources sometimes. Yeah. And it's that last 20, 10, 5% yeah. that's just diminishing returns in terms of the, the amount of resources you sometimes have to throw at things to get them perfect. Welcome to Brand New Taste, a podcast for brands in the food and beverage industry, focusing on new innovation and how understanding taste is vital to commercial success. Your hosts are Brant Mabry and Micah Carhill, co-founders of the leading development agency, Tastehead. This episode is an interview with Zara Godfrey, the managing director of the chocolate-dipped frozen banana brand, Puckpip. Zara has worked in the food and drink industry for all of her career, from the agency side of things on brands such as Lathwaite's and Rachel's Organic, to marketing roles at McDonald's and Coca-Cola. Zara launched Puck Pip in early 2023 with the ambition to disrupt the ice cream category with indulgent fruit snacking, driving healthier choices that genuinely taste delicious. The brand is already listed in Whole Foods, Planet Organic, Vegan Kind, and over 100 health food stores across the UK. The Milk Chocolate Banana recently won a Great Taste Award. So it's no surprise to hear that Puck Pip managed to sample over 14,000 chocolate bananas in a week in Whole Foods Kensington with queues out of the door. Micah, myself and everyone else at Tasted are extremely proud to have been part of this journey with Zara from the beginning. So I'm looking forward to diving into the trials, tribulations and journey so far of what we feel is one of the most exciting brands of 2023. Zara. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. And thank you for a wonderful introduction. Thank you. It's been quite a journey, let's be honest. It has indeed. Fun one. A fun one. But a challenging a fun one. one. A challenging one. But, but we've got there. Absolutely. And I'm really excited to be diving into this because I think that it is going to inspire a lot of people that are either starting a food or drink brand or thinking about it because it is challenging and you've had your fair share of them but you've come through them so far. So and far, it's so still good. early days to be fair, but it's looking pretty exciting. So let's start with how exactly did Puck Pip come about? So it's been a long journey. Um, my mother used to make me chocolate dipped frozen bananas when I was little. And I used to rush home from school, super excited to eat one. And ever since I was little, I've eaten them as a, as a snack in the afternoon, as a dessert. And even at uni, I used to make them and our freezers used to be full of bananas and all my friends thought I was mad. And one day I thought, let's give this a shot. Let's see if it could work. Um, I took it to a friend's yoga class. We did yoga, had my cool bags. And at the end of it, I got everybody to taste one of the bananas, see what they thought. And... (laughs) With my marketing head on, I took a four-page questionnaire of everything of what do people like about it? What did it taste like? When would they eat it? Would they buy it? What would they pay for it? God knows what I was thinking. It was terribly long for what I was trying to achieve. (laughs) And everyone loved it. And it kind of thought to me, well, if everyone here loves it, surely there's an opportunity in a market for it. I... It actually then gave me the courage to message Whole Foods and Planet Organic. And my previous roles, I was very marketing side, so I had never ne- never done sales. And I have to say, I found it really intimidating. Um, but I plucked up the courage, I messaged them, and God knows why, they very kindly both messaged back and invited me in. And I turned up and I basically said, if I can make this work, will you launch it? And I look back at those days now, which would never occur now that you turn Mm, up with a sample bag mm. of something that you've made at home. Or just get in a meeting with those people without a product yet. Exactly. Um, Now you're knocking on doors, constantly chasing to even get a response. Mm. Um, But anyway, they sat with me and they said, 
if I could make it work, they would consider launching it. Um, so this was obviously several years ago. Um, after 125 no's from various different manufacturers, uh, both in the UK, outside of the UK, I finally found our manufacturer um, and we set off on a journey to launch PuckFip and we're now here today. Excellent. And what's interesting is it's not an ice cream product technically, but you're in the ice cream category. So how have you permit, p- positioned the brand and the product? What's the usage occasion? How do you, how do you sell the product in to, to the trade? So we offer a permissible, indulgent, frozen snacking fruit brand. And we know consumers are very much looking for that health benefit. They're much more health conscious than they ever were. And nine out of 10 of consumers want to eat more fruit and veg, but they struggle because hits that afternoon snacking moment, hits that dessert. And actually, let's be honest, a slice of fruit doesn't always quite cut it. Yeah. So we're really trying to disrupt that category, offer consumers something that doesn't only have those more wholesome goodnesses within them, but also helps them helps them eat something that they actually that actually tastes great. We we've positioned it very much within the ice cream category because it is frozen and it is a snacking opportunity. There are lots of new, obviously, frozen snacking brands that are entering the category. Um, but we offer that point of difference with a first frozen fruit brand um, dipped in chocolate and offering that permissible snack. Well, I think it's really good, uh, just listening to you at the beginning, uh, Zara, is that you had this as a child and then you you just, you loved it. And you thought, oh, no, I'm, I'm now a teenager and then go to university. And you're still plugging away with your mates and all that sort of thing. And then... Oh, I'm going to, you know, take it to my yoga class. It's just like I'm relentless. And, and, but it's great because through all that time, you, you know, with all your marketing roles, you, you saw there's a marketing opportunity. So you took something that you're passionate about, but saw that there, were, there was an opportunity. And that's what I love about this story. It's not yeah. just about someone coming up with an idea, which we get quite a lot at Taster where people come and say, oh, I've suddenly got an idea. Yeah. You've had this idea for... Well, it can't be that long because you're so young, but, uh, it, you know, a few <laughs> years, but that way. Yeah, and, and that's probably sort of proved that it's a great idea over time, the fact that it didn't leave you, that it was it stayed with yeah, you. So. Exactly. Yeah, and I think as well, so I think had I tried, had we tried to launch it earlier, let's be honest, the market wasn't there for it. Mm-hmm. And it is only really now that consumers are becoming that much more health conscious and looking for different alternatives and something that's healthy mm-hmm. and tastes good. Had we launched it years ago, we might be in a very different position. Yeah, maybe. Although I think the thing with something like this is that people have that perception, obviously, of bananas being healthy because they're a fruit, which is great, and maybe chocolate less so. But obviously, you've got a you've got dark chocolate, which is not only seems to be more healthy and, and it's vegan, but that combination people will definitely um, see that there is a health um, part to it. But as as we've all talked about before, bananas are the number one fruit that are bought. And people love bananas. So, yeah. yes, there's health, but pe- we, people like the taste. So I think we've Correct. got both there. So whereas we work on a lot of products which are very health-driven, and although we try and get the taste as good as possible, it's, it's more difficult compared with a product like this, which is just it's natural, pure, simple tasting. And, and we guys worked on taste for ages, as you, as you very well know. And Longer than we thought we would <laughs> need to. I mean... Way, yeah. way longer than yeah. we thought. But I think we know that taste is the number one driver in sure. products. And there are yeah. so many health products out there. But if they don't taste great, no one's going to buy them again. Correct. Exactly. Well, let's talk about the product development then. Because, yeah, I think let's. it's fair to say that it was more challenging than we all anticipated. Bananas, chocolate. How difficult can it be? It was. I mean, yeah. it, it, we, it was. we've developed a lot of products, but it really surprised us just the amount of things that we needed to be aware of and the challenges from, you know, the recipe, the, the sort of temperature changes throughout the product, um, the production cycle, supply chain, HFS thrown in, HFSS thrown in for good measure um, is a real challenge. How, how, how did it how did it unfold from your pers- I love the perspective <laughs> in terms of, you know, what you were expecting, what actually happened and, and maybe what you've learned as part of the process? Yeah, no, it's, we came to you with a project that we, I, I remember writing the brief and it was very simple as far as I was concerned and thought it would be. But what we, I think all of us 
didn't misunderstand but didn't realise at the time was actually, and obviously because it's a natural product, but bananas come in all different shapes, sizes, dimensions, densities, and those are all factors that we can't control. Yeah. And depending on what the soil is, what the weather's like, when they're picked, all affects all of the above. And we've obviously then taken a product that is natural, but in its naturalist state, taken it into, has to fit within Weights and Measures Acts within the UK. And then not only that, we then decided to dip it in chocolate, which obviously we can talk about because that was a, a big one too. But on top of that, we threw HFSS at you too. So I think we had all those different factors, especially when you're taking a banana of a certain shape and size, dipping it in chocolate, different amounts of chocolate is going to go on one banana versus the other banana. We man so we manufacture out in Ecuador, which is where all of our bananas are grown. Um, and we buy bananas which are rejected from export um, and we upcycle them. But um, we're obviously chucking in those layers as well. And you guys had to work very closely with our team out in Ecuador often over Zoom, pretty much. Um, so we had, there were a lot of challenges and it's safe to say it's, we threw everything at you, but you guys still complete, like still got there and we ended up with a great product, but it, it wasn't without its challenges, hiccups and learnings, I think, along the way. Yeah, and, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of laughing about it now a little bit, but it's not because um we didn't know what we were doing i mean there were certain aspects of the project that could have been easy but i think what i will say is your commitment to the products you didn't want to compromise and rightly so and so it was like we knew it was possible and you could have conceded you you could yeah. easily have said you know what maybe we we don't focus on hfss for launch mm. or yeah. or or something else is maybe for year 2 but you didn't and we really supported that and and we had a a kind of a a good relationship but just common understanding in terms of okay this is going to take us a bit longer on both sides but we both know that it's right so that we get the best results yeah. and yeah and, and that's we, what we want as well you know yeah. we, we, we want to keep plugging away until we get the best result that and we can and we we often find with with clients um and they're they're asking for a, you know, a long list of 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 bo ticking of Tick boxes. boxes yeah exactly um and often <laughs> well no but what i was going to say actually was that um often we say look when you've got a long list Yes, we can do it, but that you will have to make some compromises often, not always, but often. Right. Um, so what are your must-haves and what are your nice-haves? But in this case, we very much supported them all, but obviously gave you that sort of, um, it made sure you realise that it does make it more difficult, but we can still, we believe we can still achieve it. Um, and I think it was the right thing to do. But if we'd have felt that one wasn't worth it, we would have probably told you and then it would have been up to you, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. I think we supported all along all of those ones because they all had... A relevant part to, to the product yeah and and chocolate was a huge focus and i'm sure huge. part of the reasons why you, you probably decided to work with us because of our experience with green and blacks and chocolate yep. and you know we always know that chocolate's important but in a product like this it's frozen so you've got a whole textural side of things to consider bananas which are quite a strong flavor to get the right chocolate that works in this product and genuinely comes through well alongside the banana across white milk and dark they all needed different sort of tricks and and, yeah. and and focuses and you know a lot of it was the quality of the chocolate the provenance etc but but also we found there's quite a lot that we could do in the development kitchen in terms of how they were prepared and and another big thing with this project was the the, the consistency especially with hfss every um banana having kind of a very similar if not identical amount of chocolate pickup so you stay in the regulations and poor matt our senior poor development matt. chef who god knows how many bananas he's dipped in chocolate over the <laughs> last year or so. um yeah they, they 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 they're the kind of the main challenges that i i think back on i think as well so we, we go back to chocolate and yes you're totally right you guys are the experts in chocolate so we came to you and we it wasn't as simple as we thought either on that side of things, right? So we tested lots of different chocolates and we almost launched with a different chocolate than what we've launched with now because actually when we tested it, consumers loved it, but we knew that there could be further opportunity to yeah. tweak it. Yeah. And I mean, that's why, hands down to you guys, that we won the Great Taste Award as well. 
Good stuff. Oh, well, and and I was about to come on to taste a, a bit more because we've already brought it up at the start, and you're saying it's that it's, it's one of the most important purchase drivers, and and you know that in in development and pre-launch, but now you've had those sampling opportunities, which they're so important, aren't so they? Important. And you gain so much feedback. I mean, the fact that you've got people queuing, and and just the few people that I've met who have discovered and tried it, the first thing they talk about is the taste. What 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 is the feedback been from consumers? You, you know. Where, where does taste sit in their priorities and, and what are the other kind of top two or three priorities that you're hearing back from consumers as well? Yeah, it's it's been a real journey in terms of learning, I'd say, but is in exciting too. So consumers, and I, I shouldn't laugh, but consumers are very surprised that it's a banana dipped in chocolate and it's frozen. <laughs> and every time you present it to them, they're like, ice cream. And you're like, no, real fruit <laughs> dipped in chocolate. And I think it's it's because it's, an unknown product that no one's tasted or experienced before mm. frozen so it comes as a surprise and because we do sit within that ice cream category it makes it i guess a little bit more confusing but every time consumers love it there's such a surprised smile and grin mm. on their face and they they genuinely love it um as you as you mentioned we sampled we did loads of sampling at whole foods we handed out over 14,000 bananas and i picked up with a team who helped us sample and i literally said what's the good, what's the bad? And they didn't have any bad feedback on taste right. or the product or anything. And having done a lot of sampling events, there's always the person who wants to tell you that they don't like it and why they don't like it, et cetera. And yeah. all of that feedback is great, obviously, but we generally didn't have it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, consumers love it. Taste is great. Um, I think one of the things is we have to make sure that we're, we leave it out for a little bit because um, can be quite sensitive on your teeth. Some mm. people like it straight from the freezer. Some people like mm. to leave it out for a bit longer. That's a learning curve for us. But it goes back again to why taste is so important. Like people are only going to pick it up and rebuy it if it if it tastes good. And I think what we've learned as well. So we have a when we did lots of testing, we have a core consumer group who is that health conscious, more female led, um, who will eat it for herself as a snack, but also uh, give it to kids as well if she's got a family. But what we learned from the sampling especially was actually everybody loved it and there wasn't um, from all different ages. Um, so, yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, you know who's a big fan of the product? Who? Oscar. Oh, of course. But I was, I was going <laughs> to say... three and a half year old. <laughs> he absolutely loves them. Yeah. yeah. But I, I was going to say, we have some, lucky enough to have samples at, at the Taste Head office and people are always dipping in there. Myself you know, included. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nat's yeah. a big fan. Yeah. Um, but I think the thing, going back to what you were saying about people couldn't get their head around that it wasn't ice cream, is that the, the thing about bananas, unlike probably any other fruit, is because of the fibre and that creaminess, mm. they have a sort of uh, ice creamy sort of quality in the texture. Yeah. And the, the bit you're saying about, you know, learning curve with regards to how people like like the temperature of them. Oh, but that's the same with ice cream, isn't it? Yeah. I'm yeah. someone who goes yeah. straight, especially when it's cold. premium products yeah. as well, in particular. Yeah. You know, well, that, that's true. You need to let them temper to soften. Exactly, exactly. But I will go into yeah. a like a, a Mr. Whippy or something straight in, cold yeah. as as you like. Whereas my wife just will just has got very sensitive teeth, so it's different. So yeah. we're all different anyway, yeah. and I, that's the way we all slightly differently consume you know foods that we love anyway. Yeah. I mean, I'm not very patient, so I'm not very good at <laughs> leaving it out either. <laughs> let's let's talk about HFSS in a little mm. bit more detail because everyone's been kind of, you know, thrown around with the regulations coming in, saying they're going to be enforced, it being delayed, supermarkets acting anyway. That must have been just, yeah, such a, a, a an extra layer of, of challenge on top of what is already incredibly challenging, launching a new food or beverage yeah. brand. How have you found that and, and where do you think things sit currently with HFSS? HSS has obviously been delayed, um, but we also know that supermarkets ha have gone ahead with it. So for us, I think it's only a benefit that we are HSS compliant. For me, we are a fruit as a dipped in chocolate, but the main part of the product, over 80% of the product is banana. So if we can't make it HSS, it it doesn't didn't didn't sit terribly well with me to be non HSS. Sure. Um so that's why we made sure that it that it happened. And I think in the future, it's only going to only gonna benefit us. But it also helps us be a bit more open, I think, to our consumers as well. While they don't necessarily know too much about HFSS, it does make me feel, does make us feel better as a brand that we are 
And, and just, I'm sure everybody listening, watching is um, aware of HFSS, but just in case, it'll probably be my mum or somebody who's not <laughs> heard of it. High fat, sugar, salt. Um, yeah, regulations that are being brought in to um, restrict advertising and placing those products towards the back of stores, et cetera, to promote healthier snacking, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, just in case. And, and, and to your point is that you want to be non HFSS. Exactly. It's, it's and that always gets me yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it the does, wrong way around. Yeah, but HFSS yeah. compliance or non HFSS. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a mouthful. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we spoke about kudos to you getting a meeting with Whole Foods and Planet Organic before you even had a product. There'll be some of our clients listening to that kind of <laughs> pulling the hair out because that's what they're doing with good products yeah. now still trying to get it, it, uh, i have to say it didn't help because the buyers had then left by the time we finally launched but. oh and that's a story that <laughs> you gave you some hear so, it so did, often. It, did, it did yeah they, they 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 rotate quite a bit that's mm. that's a really common story um but now that you've got the product and and approaching those retailers and other buyers you know it's something that we know is is the biggest challenge on the horizon for for a lot of our clients once the product and the brand has been developed is is getting those listings how have you find that experience have you got any tips or i wish i wish i had share? a secret <laughs> weapon but no um it's tough like let's be honest it's tough and it's tough on the buyers too so if you think about how many new food brands there are and how many emails they must get yeah. um and how how do you stand out amongst the crowd so we are, as mentioned, um, as you already said, like in health food stores and plant organic and vegan kind. We did only just launch in January. Um, we are in bigger conversations, but we're not fully there yet. Um, yeah, it, it, it's tough and it, it, you keep having to bang at those doors. And for us, I think the sampling that we've done and the amount that we've handed out, we made sure that we did uh, Vox Pops and videos to really show buyers actually consumers do love the product and there is an opportunity for this and we are incremental to your category and to your freezers um, but we're getting there and I think it's persistence and you look at some brands and it takes eight to ten years to get into some sure. so I think you keep having to remind yourself that actually we are getting there and we are doing well um, it's just a slow journey and it's slower than I think all of us in food and drink would ever like. But, but yeah, persistence, I think, is is very much key. And, yeah, we do have some important meetings coming up. So it's looking positive. Exciting. Yeah. I, I think it's very important or useful that you've obviously been in the food and drink industry for, for you know, your whole career because you knew some of these things. You weren't, your expectations weren't overly high. Yeah. Um, for those of us who, and, and the same mm. with us too, um, we've always worked in the food and drink. And you really, but when people come in new, their expectations are very different. Yeah, um, yeah. To, yeah. to how how things are going to be. Hopefully, it's, so, it's a common thing, that, and to the point where we've put info packs together to just kind of, yeah, partly so we'd have to say the same thing again and again and again, but also just to really help people because I don't think they realise just yeah, but and it, it's on both sides of it as well because you've got MOQs on manufacturers on one side, and then you've got kind of you know challenges of getting listing and yeah sort of so, no, so, all, so all sorts of things that are I, do, I do generally think though if you're not in the food and drink industry so i explain to friends and family that this is where we are and they're like why aren't you in all these supermarkets <laughs> and i'm like we will but just yes. not yet it takes time yeah, the amount of briefs <laughs> that we get from potential startups where They've got Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, Morrison's yeah. in year one. Like, be okay, wonderful. let's have a call. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I do think it goes back to your point that you were just talking about, however, is it's beneficial to come from um, food and drink industry. But I also weirdly think it's a bit of a hindrance too because yeah. there are so many rules and regulations yeah. that I know that you have to stick to or that you have to do and that it's not right to do this or you can do this or you need to follow this guidelines etc whereas I think if I look back at my former self previously when I hadn't had any sales experience at all and I was just like yep I'll message Whole Foods they'll respond <laughs> to me and then I just thought that was normal whereas I think had I known quite how hard it was I probably would have spent a lot more time like writing an email putting together this full deck etc you might have um, talked yourself out of and I might have talked well. to myself out yeah. of it yeah exactly yeah. and I think sometimes when you don't know things you can be a bit more riskier because you yeah. don't know actually that it's a risk yeah. Yeah. no that's a fair point. very good point are there any other challenges that we've not touched on so far that you want to go through i know distribution has been distribution distribution logistics has been logistics yeah has been um a bit of a nightmare i mean we're obviously a frozen product which doesn't help us in the first place um 
I think, yeah, we've had our challenges along the way. So we, <laughs> our first shipment arriving, um, we got stuck in customs. So, so when you, commodity code. So when we initially launched the product and we moved it, so chocolate dip frozen bananas had never been launched before. And as a result, nobody knew what codes, what commodity codes to give them. And we had to work that through and it took a long time to figure out how to actually be able to ship us logistically to make sure that we had the right codes, the right papers, et cetera, et cetera, to be able to import into the UK. We finally got across that hurdle and then we, our first shipment was stuck in customs or the papers getting um, checked <laughs> and someone unplugged the container. So um, we, uh, <laughs> the goods arrived in our warehouse, the warehouse without, I think they've been defrosted and refrozen. Um, sent me some samples and actually sent them to you yeah i remember yeah yeah um and yeah they they'd been defrosted and refrozen so we we had to start again so we have that um we've had getting samples here there and everywhere to try and sample that's that's been um that's been a challenge indeed um yeah, I'd say, I'd, say, I'd say the commodity code was quite an interesting one for simply just not knowing that you'd even, from, from my side of things, not knowing that it needed a code and how to code it, et cetera. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a classic case of the, the, the things that you just never will be able to foresee, really. And, no. and, and, you know, so many of our clients and other people that you speak to, everyone's got a story or two about just well, how would you ever think about yeah. something like that or how could you not ever Not being in that part of the industry. And you've obviously chosen the most tricky part of logistics, which is frozen. Frozen, yeah. yeah. And a product and, that doesn't exist yeah. or didn't exist. <laughs> and obviously warehousing with frozen and it's all very expensive. It is, yeah. it is. Eye-watering People, me. I think, again, who, who aren't in the, who haven't worked in, in the food and drink industry, or particularly in the frozen bit, don't realise how much trickier, more costly it is to, to work yeah. with that. Because when you've got that, you know, if you've got a product that's that's ambient, i.e., you can be just kept at room temperature, you just put it in a truck, a lorry, whatever. If you've got something that's chilled, it's got to be chilled all through that supply chain. It's not just yeah. the one bit. And as soon as it, and obviously frozen is going to be frozen, and frozen, as soon as it starts w warming up a bit, and even it, it can still be frozen, but warm, but it changes. Yeah. It changes. And we get ice crystals forming, et cetera. So very challenging, but, you know. Yeah. Well, on a positive, uh, more positive note, what does the, future hold for Puck Pip? Well, we've obviously just launched, we launched our multi-packs, as you know, we've launched our singles um, and we are working on some MPD, which is exciting, which you guys obviously know about, but all I can say really is watch this space. Um, but yeah, we're, we're excited to continue disrupting freezers um, with Indulgent Fruit. I suppose you've got big plans for next summer in terms of, because obviously incredibly seasonal, Yes. So, yeah, you must already it is, be thinking so about it. It is and isn't seasonal. If you actually look at it, the category is very much eaten outside of outside of the yeah. summer too. Um, think of those moments on the sofa in the evenings yeah. where you're mm. eating ice cream. Um, so that and very much within that snacking phase too. So we we don't just we don't just believe we're the dessert. We are a snack yeah. either on the go at home, etc. Um, but no, we have big plans for next year. Um, we're finalizing all our plans at the moment. So yeah. We'll come back to you when Watch I can say space. more. Exactly. Great. Exactly. Nice. Well, we're on to the last few questions that we always like to ask our guests. And the first one is, what are the top five tips that you would give to somebody looking to start a food or beverage brand in 2023? Top five tips. Um, I think firstly, I'd say learn as much as you possibly can. Um, read, listen, ask advice. I think people within the category are and frozen, not frozen food, sorry, just food and drink in general are really kind and everybody really wants to help each other and succeed. It's a special industry actually, actually for that. Yeah. yeah, it is. And it's very different to when you're big brand side and everyone's willing to help even if they're technically a competitor, mm. um, which is really lovely. Um, so network as much as you possibly can. I, I think one of my hindrances was very much perfectionism um, and actually... Uh, AJ Sharp, who's who helps us on our PR and social, she she was like, Zara, if it's 80% there, go with it. And I was like, no, it doesn't follow this and that. And she was like, go with it. Um, so I've kind, of, I've kind of kept that on. And actually, if it's 80% there, half the time it's probably perfectly right anyway. And you can always try and achieve, no, nothing's 100% right. No, ever, you exactly. Know, but yeah. you, you can improve. There's always those improvements that we try and make, you know, with, with whether it's products we've, 
the brands we work with or, or for our clients' brands. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a common balance we wrestle with for different reasons, but it's, it's yeah, you got to find that balance for yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, what else? I think um, persistence. I mean, our journey has been very much about persistence. And if you really believe in something, I think you can get there. There will obviously be hurdles along the way. But um, yeah, I mean, the fact that we had contacted 125 manufacturers before we found our we found our one then actually i think i think it's important to continue persisting mm. and we persisted with the products that we developed you, with you yeah. guys too very much so um i'd also say so imposter syndrome i think is a big one for all of us within the food and drink industry and you don't know what you're doing half the time like hands up i don't know what i'm doing half the time um but you get there and you figure it out and yeah. it goes back to asking and help asking for help as well but I think just trust your gut most of the time yeah. would be one of my pieces of advice. And then move fast if you can, like move as fast as you can, but adapt along the way. Yeah. And if you fail, you fail, but it goes back to adapting, adapt, fail and adapt. Um, mm. Cause you don't really know what's right until you do. Mm. And, it, and it ties into that perfectionism piece as well, isn't mm. it? It's all about, cause if you're trying to perfect you, then you'll slow things down because the common thing we're often saying is you get, 80% of the way there with the first 30% of resources sometimes. Yeah. And it's that last 20, 10, 5% yeah. that's just diminishing returns in terms of the, the amount of resources you sometimes have to throw at things to get them perfect. And so, yeah. And and, and, and no one notices the things that you do and the way that you think. They you know, don't. And, yeah. And, and so, yeah, it, it's definitely good advice. Yeah. I yeah and I think that it. willingness to fail is a big one. Yeah. Which, mm. You know, people can be scared of it, but you don't learn if you don't exactly. fail. No, you don't. Um, so, and we've important. had we've had lots of failures along the way, yeah. but we're definitely getting there, which is great. I'm going to ask you a question because oh I asked you earlier because I hadn't asked you before. So, is um, Puck Pip? Where's the name from? Where's the name from? So we wanted a name that would help us actually. Um, be able to expand our products. Um, so pucker is in good and happy. Um, mm. And pips is in pips and seeds where all fruit is from. There you go. Makes sense. Makes I, mean, sense. I did ask you earlier. But, um, <laughs> but I think it's now good to... Knows. Now everyone knows. Exactly. Now everyone knows, exactly. <laughs> What's your desert island dish? Obviously a chocolate dipped frozen Obviously. banana. Obviously. Um, aside from that, I love sushi and a glass of wine. Yeah, we, 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 we can get down with that, can't we? Very much so. Following on from that, then, do you have a favourite restaurant? Do I have a favourite? I, so my husband and I are both like big foodies. We love trying new places. Um, so I wouldn't actually say I've got a favourite restaurant, but we definitely like to try new places, try new cuisines, and that's both in London, out of London, when travelling. Um, I'd say, I mean, we're obviously here recording in Fulham now, and we're very privileged to have loads of like wonderful restaurants. There's Koji, there's Gola. Um, freak scene that just opened. Yeah, my wife went. It's good. Yeah, and, and said it was great. So Scott Hallsworth is the chef, and yeah. so I remember reading up about it. And Jem said you should really come and, and check it out. I mean, hopefully she will go with me one time. But she just <laughs> happened to have an invitation wow. with friends, so I can go next time. She did, but, but yeah, call me and say <laughs> <laughs> not not with Brown. No, we'll, we'll we'll check that out. And, <laughs> and actually, yeah, we're recording in Fulham. Yeah, Tastehead's based in Fulham. You're based in I Fulham am. as well, so, so it was a very local affair. Very convenient indeed. Great. Do you have a book or a podcast or any other sort of resource that you would like to sort of point people in the direction of? Yeah, um, I mean, I personally love listening to other others' stories and how brands have grown. Um, there's obviously Diary of a CEO. There's obviously How I Built This, uh, Brand Growth Heroes. One of the things I came across earlier this year is Blinkist. Um, so it's a it's a subscription, but it covers all of the titles, all of the nonfiction titles, basically, but drills it down into about 20 minutes yeah. um, and covers all the key points as what was in the book and all the learnings, et cetera, which I find really useful. Um, I don't have huge amounts of time to mm. listen or read to full books and my attention span as well when I'm thinking about 10 million other things um, isn't great either. So, yeah, I found 100%. Blinkist really helpful. And I'll tell you what else is good for that. Ooh. Chat GPT. 
Yeah. So I didn't, re- I didn't realize this in a number of ways, <laughs> but I didn't realize it knows an awful lot of books. And if you ask it, could you please summarize this book? Yeah, and it point. knows about the book. You can have a conversation with it because it will wow. summarize it into the chapters. Yeah. And you say, oh, that chapter sounds interesting. What was the main takeaways here? And, and once you learn how to use it, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I tested it out on a pretty sort of niche um, it was either marketing or sales book. I thought it's not going to know this, and it did. And, really? and, it, and I got what I needed from yeah. it. It was on my list to read, and I got the main takeaways just within a You're few like, minutes. Done. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. It's a good point because it it's got uh, you know opportunity to take anything from the internet. So yeah, as long as it's there, it so can be pre twenty twenty one or something. I forget the year. And look, not saying that you shouldn't ever read a book again because yeah. obviously some books and a lot of them you do want to read from start to finish. But the list that I've got of what I want to read, yeah, I'll just yeah, never get around to. Yeah. So, but but I had tried Blinkist as well, and and that's that's also really good. So, yeah, great. Good. Um, what else do you have going on in your world or Pop Pip's world that? You so want we just launched into Dubai. Um, mm. which is really exciting. Um, it actually hadn't been on our original first year plan, um, but these things always happen and adapt. Um, yeah. So no, it's really exciting. Um, so we're listed in Kibsons and we're launching into Spinneys as well. Um, yeah. So to anyone listening to buy, please check us out and go buy us. There you go. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, Zara. I think it's oh, been a brilliant you. episode. I really think it will inspire a lot of people. And um, I look forward to doing another episode maybe next year when we've got even more things to talk we've got about. our new MPD there you yeah. go thanks, <laughs> thanks very much thanks so much guys bye bye thank you for listening if you enjoyed this episode please like and subscribe and for more information please visit tastehead.com we hope you join us for our next episode <laughs>